guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is the first Living Medal of Honor recipient from Delta Force. So again, this is the first living, because again, Medal of Honor, we've done a couple of these, haven't we? Yeah, so they were obviously people that have passed away. Passed away, like, because to get a Medal of Honor, it's like the highest of the high yeah. in the US Army accolades yeah. and stuff like that. So normally you've had to do something heroic, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, a lot of times that results they, in, in death. life lost mm -hmm. and stuff like that, because they have sacrificed yeah. their own life for other people and stuff like that. Uh, I always remember when we did that one, um, I think it was the first ever one recorded, um, and it's like the view from the top, and he was just going in to try and save yeah, his comrades that. and stuff like that. Um, so this is the first living. Not heard of it. No, I've not. Smash the button if you enjoy this content, guys. Smash that subscribe button as well. We'd seriously appreciate it. Are you ready to check it out? Yeah. Let's check out the first living Medal of Honor recipient. What we got. In the early morning of October 22nd, 2015, Thomas Paine and his team stormed a prison in Iraq. Okay. Their target were two multi-story buildings holding over 70 hostages facing execution. Just as the special forces were engaged in a fierce firefight with the insurgents, the building suddenly caught fire while the hostages were still trapped inside. Time to free all the civilians unharmed was running out at a rapid pace. For what happened next, Thomas Paine would receive the Medal of Honor, America's highest military award. Paine was a motivated and very experienced Delta Force soldier with more than 13 years of service. Okay. In 2012, he had even won the best ranger competition, an annual 62-hour selection in which only two soldiers emerge victorious. 62 hours? In the process, Payne didn't let his severe shrapnel injury, suffered two years earlier during a deployment to Afghanistan, slow him down in any way. What a beast. He Seems deployed elite. to every trouble spot in the world a total of 17 times to demonstrate his skills on special operations. Payne's numerous trainings included a sniper course, as well as the jump master and tandem master qualifications, which means that he can carry another person who has never skydived before when free falling. On his current deployment, Payne was in Northern Iraq as a deputy team leader to assist in the fight against the so-called Islamic State, which had captured large parts of the country. Okay. On October 22, 2015, Payne's team was tasked with freeing more than 70 Iraqi hostages held in the northern city of Al Havija. The special forces had spent an entire week planning the mission and preparing for any contingencies they might face. When new reconnaissance images suddenly I mean, showed freshly dug it graves, must be, like if you're trying to think of the contingencies, yeah. a million things could happen in that situation. Crazy. You don't know. You don't know, do you? Enough anything. Like I doubt they ex like I doubt they plan for the building to catch fire. No. I imagine that potentially was on purpose if a new bill's in there. I don't know. Potentially. If you let us know in the comments, it'll be quite interesting to see if there is more info about it. Um, but like a million things could go wrong in a foreign country, not it's knowing scary. the building. Do you know what I mean? It's so risky to them. Yeah, what a guy though. Yeah, no, like he seems he's like next level. Ne like elite of the elite, doesn't he? I mean, it's he got the Medal of Honor. We don't exactly know what he's done yet, but he seems to have the heart to go he, with. To do. Him things, just being a beast yeah. as well, doesn't it? Outside the prison, it became clear that the hostages could soon be executed. As a result, the task force was given the green light for the mission, and the operators, along with their Kurdish partner forces, boarded several helicopters, which took off toward the IS stronghold shortly thereafter. Okay. The Kurdish forces consisted of a unit simply known as the Counterterrorism Group, or CTG, which is part of the Peshmerga and has worked with Americans in the past. Okay. Just before dawn, the Chinooks touched ground again and the special forces rushed through the stirred up sand toward the prison. After the Kurdish counterterrorism unit unsuccessfully attempted to blast an entrance through the prison wall, the Americans used ladders to climb over. While climbing over the prison I know wall, that, however, that, 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 they came under heavy fire, seriously wounding Delta Force soldier Joshua Wheeler. Once on the other side, dust and smoke made it nearly impossible to see. Relying on his training, Payne led his team to the first building where his medic left to help tend to the wounded man. The Kurdish troops were initially reluctant to move forward, but Payne and his comrades motivated them to advance despite the adverse conditions. On his orders, they successfully secured the building where the first 38 hostages were being held, encountering number, only yeah. light resistance. As they broke the lock on the prison door, Payne could see the expression on the hostages' faces change from fear and despair to excitement and joy. That must be With the tension gone, some of them be. even began to cry. 
but for the special forces, the job was far from over. While the team was escorting the civilians outside, Payne received an alarming radio message. His comrades at the second... I mean, it must be, I was just thinking about it, like, this is going to be like the worst example ever. But it's just okay. one that's come to my head. I know it's going to be a bad example. But I'm just thinking, like, a, like a football match. Mm. The highs and lows of what happens on a pitch. The emotions in the sand. It's hard to keep you cool in that situation. Yeah. Like a high happens, a low happens. It completely changes your mood. And I just feel like if you're a soldier, I know we're trained not to, but you're seeing the emotions of people going from, like, devastated to up. How are you not getting caught up in that? And like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of get what you mean. Yeah. Like the emotion gets to you, but then you've still got a job to do. That must be quite hard. Yeah, because they'll be they'll be emotional, but they know they still they've not finished. Yeah, they can't be there. Like, yes, we've saved thirty eight. Seeing people go from fear to joy, crying with happiness. They're not. The job's not over yet. They've got to just ignore that and be like, come on, keep going. Mm -hmm. But that must be quite hard. It must be because I'm sure. You got to put like your emotions aside. And, literally, yeah. but, but that it must be hard. Must be, especially right. because they're that kind of people that, obviously, they're they're doing it like to help people. To help people, they? so you'd think that they would have compassion and. The empathy yeah because they're doing something like that so they would have feelings it's not like they're yeah but we're just in the zone to fight their feelings. The end. like i said it was a bad example but i kind of knew kinda where i was going with it and <laughs> building were making less progress and needed urgent help the enemy had barricaded themselves and was resisting against the special forces with everything from grenades to suicide bombers Payne could hear the noise of the battle all the way to his position and knew he had to act quickly saying Let's get in the fight. He led his men through the enemy gunfire to the hot zone. Arriving at the second building, he and a teammate climbed to the roof to engage the entrenched insurgents from above. From here, the team leader hoped to break the enemy's resistance, allowing the second team to advance. Okay. As the soldiers fought from the roof, they continued to take fire, not only from the enemy below, but also from the area around the prison. On top of that, the numerous explosions had set the building on fire. The flames like spread to the yeah. upper floor, and some rooms were already filled with thick, dark smoke, causing the trapped hostages to run out of time. The risk of dying from smoke inhalation, or even being burned alive, increased with each passing minute. It must be so scary. It's so, so scary. After Kurdish and American special forces made several attempts to establish fire superiority and storm the building, they were finally able to push forward, suffering heavy casualties. Payne climbed down to the first floor again, glanced at the prisoner's door and realized it was secured with the same thick lock as in the first building. The battle for the hostages was still raging and Payne was aware that to rescue them, he would have to expose himself, not only to enemy fire, but also to the toxic smoke that filled the hallway. He had only a few seconds left to make a decision about the fate of the prisoners. He then grabbed a bolt cutter and despite the enemy gunfire, ran to the steel door where he cut the first lock. Wow. The hot air and smoke were unbearable, so he had to go back immediately to take a breath. But there was a second lock blocking the door, and the hostages were still trapped. The Kurdish forces tried to open the lock themselves, but to no avail, so Payne again rushed into the inferno and broke the second lock as well. The combined forces then cleared each room to eliminate possible threats and free all the hostages. At that moment, a second message came in over the radio. The building was too badly damaged and was already beginning to collapse. Imagine All forces getting that were when you're ordered in to there. evacuate. I know, you, you don't even know when it's going to come down on you. And you're just trying to get the hostages out as well. But what a guy again, putting his own life in so much danger for others. Payne knew there were still hostages inside. No way. Therefore, he voluntarily went back into the building and ran through the hallway despite the raging fire as well as the unclear enemy situation. Many of the hostages were confused and did not know what was going on, but Payne got them all outside. Wow. He then returned to the building two more times to make sure that no one had been left behind. Only when all people were point. safe, That's the thing, he you left don't the know hostile when. place and reported to his team leader that they were now ready to evacuate. When the special forces left the building complex, there were still enemies nearby, so they took the hostages in their midst and walked like a human shield to the right and left of them. Human shield. However, the wow. civilians were so traumatized that they would reflexively stop every time the soldiers opened fire, which delayed the evacuation. Therefore, the special forces decided to cease their own covering fire, 
exposing themselves to greater danger so that the hostages would no longer be frightened and keep oh, running. Wow. After the group finally arrived at the helicopters, Payne faced another problem. Because they had freed so many hostages, it was unclear whether the helicopters could handle all the extra load. <laughs> they got about many. After some quick calculations, they were able to get everyone on board, but it was so cramped that the soldiers had to spend the entire flight standing up. In total, 75 hostages were freed, Whoa. 20 IS fighters were killed, and five others were detained. The hostages, Payne's strike team, and Kurdish partner forces returned to Erbil without incident. They had participated in one of the largest hostage rescues in Special Forces history. Fat For his guy. actions yeah. that day, Payne was awarded the Medal of Honor in September Recent. 2020. Wow. That's, that's he is the first though. Delta Force member to receive this special award, still being alive. Wow. The first two medals have been awarded posthumously to the snipers Shugart and Gordon for their actions at the Battle of Mogadishu in 1993. Unfortunately, Joshua Wheeler, who had been hit during the assault on the prison, succumbed to his wounds. He had led his team relentlessly against the enemy forces to support his comrades from the other squad. When Wheeler was hit, he was at the head of his men. For the courageous action regardless of enemy fire, he was posthumously awarded the Silver Star, a brotherhood that no one else could ever understand. Wow. Oh, what a video. Um, again, pff, huge, huge respect. Like we always say, huge respect. I mean, you watch these videos and it just really hits home what people do so that we can, like an example, we can record these videos. You at home mm -hmm. can watch these videos. You can go to the shop Obviously, it's stressful times with everything that's going on in the world, but nowhere near as what stressful it would if people like Payne like, yeah. didn't go and do this kind of stuff. Uh, what a legend. And also, like, the stress of them going... They must they must feel like, oh, my God, this could go so wrong. Definitely. Like, but it must be panic. so mentally hard to put that aside. I suppose the train is that severe. They've just, they've just drilled on it. You know yeah, what I, mean? I guess. They pro probably... The, point where they realize it's after yeah and they're coming down from the from the high and to get in like Delta Force you've got to be so committed so they are so committed to mm -hmm. it do you know what I mean more than that smash that button if you enjoyed this video guys smash the subscribe button would really appreciate it again huge huge respect as always and what should we do have a fantastic day and we will see you legends in the next one peace